Hello, thank you for joining me today as we continue our devotion entitled A Psalm to Bring Calm. And these are crazy times with the COVID-19 outbreak, but I pray today that God will just minister to you, will encourage you, and supply you with His peace. This morning, we're going to look at Psalm 86. Psalm 86 and verse number 1, David says, Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. One day a woman was driving through the countryside when she noticed a tornado coming and she got out of her car and hid behind it and watched as it demolished a house nearby. Running over to what was now a hole in the ground, she saw a man hunkered down with his eyes closed. And she said, are you okay? Is there anyone else down there with you? The man said, yes, I'm okay. And no, there's no one here except me and God. And we're having an urgent conversation. You know, nothing fuels our prayer like crisis. In times of crisis, we can really get down to business with prayer and calling upon the Lord. Even people who would not probably classify themselves as believers during a time of crisis pray. But here's the thing. We shouldn't just call on God during a time of crisis. We should call on God and draw near to Him at all times, even when times are going well in our lives, when times are going good. However, emergencies become opportunities to experience God's grace and power in a greater way. And the central truth of this psalm, Psalm 86, is this. Our greatest needs should cause us to call upon the great God who is able to help us and to answer us. Verse number 1, David says, Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. David is in a crisis, and he turns to the Lord in prayer. He pleads that God would hear him and that God would answer him. David knows that his only help is the Lord. When David says that he's poor and needy, he's referring to the fact that he is helpless and he is totally dependent upon God. Oh, my friend, how we need him today. How we need him. We need his help, don't we? We need His divine intervention. We need to pray this prayer, O oh Lord, hear me. Lord, answer me. We are in need of You. We are totally dependent upon You. David was desperate for God, and he says in verse number 2, Guard my life, for I am devoted to You. Save Your servant who trusts in You. You are my God. Save Your servant. Save Your servant. David asked for God's protection and intervention. And he reminds God, God, I've been faithful. I have been faithful to follow your word. God, I trust in you. In other words, I don't have anyone else to turn to. God, I'm trusting in you. I'm asking your help. I'm asking for your intervention. And he says in verse number 7, In the day of trouble I call to you, for you will answer me. Then in verse 14, he says, Arrogant men are attacking me. A band of ruthless men seek my life, men without regard for you. So David was stuck between a rock and a hard place. He needed God to step onto his scene in a big way and change the situation. He realized that there was no one else to change the situation except God. And so he asked God, God, I need you to help me. I need you to change the situation. Ruthless men are after me. You know, our desperate situation should drive us to 
our knees to call upon God in prayer. However, that's not always the case. You know, sometimes we do everything but pray. We talk about the situation to our friends or to our co-workers. We discuss the situation on social media. We discuss the situation with those in our family. We may even complain about the situation. We may even blame the president. We may blame someone else. But my friend, those things will not change the situation. The only thing that can change the situation is if we will call upon the Lord. He's the answer right now, my friend. He's the answer for whatever situation we're going through. The crisis that we're in, He is the situation. And we shouldn't have the idea, well, when all else fails, let's pray. No, we should go to God first. Prayer should be our first resort, not our last resort. We should pray at the beginning and not at the end. We should pray about it first. And when we pray about it first, it shows that we're trusting in the Lord. John Bunyan once said, You can do more than pray after you have prayed, but you cannot do more than pray until you have prayed. You see, when we take the situation to God in prayer, first of all, we're saying to God, God, I believe that you're able to help me in this situation. God, I believe that you're greater than the situation I'm going through. Lord, I believe that you're greater than this COVID-19. I believe that you are greater than the crisis. I believe that you're going to work this out. You're going to work it all out. Yes, our needs are great, but we need to recognize that our God is greater. And no matter how big the situation is, that our God is greater and He's able. He wants us to turn to Him in prayer. David says in verse number 3, he prays, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. David was asking for God's mercy, and he was calling on God all throughout the day. You know, how can we make it during a crisis like this? How can we make it? By asking for God's mercy and by praying all throughout the day. You say, Pastor, I work, so how can I pray all throughout the day? You pray throughout the day by saying sentence prayers. God, I need your help right now. God, I need your peace today. God, I need your strength right now. God, I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me. Lord, I want your perfect will to be done in my life. God, I need you to protect me. God, I'm turning this situation over into your hands. God, I'm trusting that you're going to be my strength and my guide today. God, I'm praying that you're going to help me with this situation because, God, you are forever faithful. It's praying sentence prayers like this throughout the day. This is on top of that time, that special time that we spend with God in the morning. And David says in verse number 4, Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. The pressures of the situations have sapped the joy from the life of David. And he asked God to bring him joy, to lift up his soul. Maybe today the crisis that we're going through or something else that you're facing has sapped your joy. Maybe you're discouraged. Maybe even to the point of depression. But know this today, as you call upon God, He's able to give you joy. He's able to renew that joy in your heart. As you spend time in His presence, He's able to fill you with joy. Psalm 16, chapter 16, verse 11 says, In His presence is fullness of joy. Where is the fullness of joy? Where can it be found? In the presence of the Lord. You see, as we wait in the presence of God... He's able to renew us. He's able to refresh us. He's able to renew His joy in our hearts and our lives. The Holy Spirit is the giver of joy. And as we spend time in the presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is able to fill us with joy unspeakable and full of glory. As you see, you know, right now there's not a whole lot of joy to be found. 
you turn, especially when you turn on the TV, it's doom and gloom. But when you turn to God, you go into His presence. You can find fullness of joy. As you wait in His presence, He's able to fill you with His joy. David says in verse number 5, You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. If there was anyone that knew about God's forgiveness, it was David. He had personally experienced God's forgiveness. And he knew that God was good and that he was great in love. He was a great God of love. And knowing all this about God encouraged David to call upon the Lord. You know, if you have experienced God's forgiveness, the fact that your sins have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ, my friend, that should make you want to call upon the Lord. Oh, He is good. He is a good God. God is good. As the song says, God is good all the time, not just once in a while. He's good all the time. God is good in every way. James reminds us that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. Everything that we have is because of God's goodness to us. He's good in the fact that He didn't give us what we deserve. But He gave us what we did not deserve, His grace. He gave His Son, Jesus Christ, to take our place. That's the abounding love of our God. And that should make us want to call upon His name. So come on, let's call upon His name right now in prayer. Lord, we thank You for Your great love unto us. We thank You that You hear us when we call upon Your name. We thank You for Your forgiveness the price that you paid for us at the cross of Calvary. We thank you that you paid our sin debt in full. We have a lot to be thankful for even during these times of difficulty, during this time of crisis. And Lord, there may be some today that this crisis has sapped their joy. And I pray right now that as they go into their time of prayer with you, in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And I pray the Holy Spirit would renew that joy in their hearts and their lives. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And today we call on you all throughout the day because, Lord, you're our strength. You're our help. And I pray, God, that they would not keep their eyes on the circumstances, but upon the good and the great God who is abounding in love, the God who is greater than their circumstances the God who is our Savior, and our trust is in you. We're looking to you today. Bless your people and encourage them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you today.